So you can say I I can say a secret right now or I can't say a secret right now. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 834 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined today by not one, not two, but three co-hosts. We got J.D. Raider in the mix. We got Ben Funky Askren and Mr. Who's Number One himself. David Bray is here. He was doing the watch party, so I said, hey, why don't you stick around, talk a little Who's Number One. You put this event together. It's an amazing, amazing evening of wrestling. We got a lot to talk about because Worlds is happening, um, not as we speak, but it'll be getting started here very soon. Well, it has to, started. To, it the has tournament start, has started. It has started, but it also has ceased for the time being, um, and we'll resume started soon. Yet ceased. They, yes. they they saw that FRL goes live at eight fifteen, and they said, you know what, we're gonna put this break right here. That's called Every respect. Day. That's called respect. Respect the biz. Yes, I, I feel like it, it actually kind of works out like that a lot because uh, it's almost always in Europe somewhere yes. so we're within like an hour or two of each other mm-hmm indeed so i think we we should start probably with worlds because we can probably briefly get everyone caught up on on the haps <laughs> so far very, very briefly on the greco front as we have no medals max nowry did wrestle for a medal he got close he was close made the semis got fifth um that was kind of the the bright spot for team usa which uh, otherwise was the rough, uh, rough couple rough days up. for for Team USA Greco, though. Based on you know, we had one medal last year. He retired a couple weeks ago, and so you know, what did you expect? It's, it's not it's, it's not surprising development. Obviously, Team USA is in a transition period between coaches. The coach also was, you know, relieved of his duties after the team was set. So really weird time. We didn't even have two of our starters. We had and we had three. Three, three. Ten, three starters were out. Weird, just a weird overall thing for, for Greco. You got that was the, the provisor Thielke thing. No explanation whatsoever on where they went or what happened there. It's just they're gone. Jangelo retires. The coach is out. New coach is in. Um, so, yeah, on top of the fact that we don't have a lot of success in this sport anyways, it's not a, not a huge shock that we're coming home empty-handed there. But we will not be coming home Empty-handed on the women's side. Kayla Miracle is wrestling for gold this morning slash early afternoon. Um, Jakara Winchester wrestling for bronze after she fell in the semis to Mukaida of Japan, who is ridiculous, um, as Japan tends to be. Don Parrish wrestling in the semis, as is um, Sarah Hildebrandt. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah's killing it. She's killing it. She's doing Sarah things. She's so good. Um, She's developed a nice little shock. Uh, sh her match one was 
Typical Sarah takedown, lace. Nice. Yep. But uh, she, she had a nice, I think, two nice little shocks in her quarter. She's really, really good. Um, man, I don't what, – what kind of chance are, are we giving her in, if she makes the final against Japan? Sasaki. Uh, I don't – I mean, Sarah's really good, but she she lost that girl last year, correct? Same girl, um, or she went up away. Was it her? It was different. I, I, don't think she, I don't know if it was her. I, I don't think she her, lost to her. It was her backup. Um, okay. Let's not talk about that part. Um, <laughs> she lost to Yoshimito, Yoshimito last year in the finals. Yeah, because mm, okay. remember the story last year at 2021 Worlds was, was all right, we, we know we probably can't beat Japan's ones. We're pretty confident we can beat their threes. Let's see what we can do against their number two squad. And we found out we could not beat them. Yeah, they're oh, really man. good. Not yet. Um, but then the, the two girl, the other two girls that we had lose early, um, both of them, both of them were to Japan, right? So there's a chance to get pulled back in or no? Diamonds so, eliminated. Her uh, Diamonds her eliminated. opponent lost. That Mal Malvel. Japan still hasn't Malvelty. figured out uh, the upper weights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Mallory Malvelty. Velty. She could get pulled back in if Japan wins in the 65 semis. Correct. So yeah. Japan just doesn't have large people. I think. I think that's the issue. Which you know what I laugh about sometimes. I laugh about sometimes that they're the country that chose to do sumo wrestling when they have no big people. It's kind of funny. Yeah, they have some, but it's a lot fewer. Not really. When's the last Japanese upperweight that was a beast? Hmm. Yokozuna, obviously. <laughs> Stop. He weighed seven hundred pounds. No, but like seriously, you see Japan like they've done some duels in the past or World Cup. And they'll bring some hammers at like the lower say because if to you're five big in Japan, weights. you go sumo. And yeah, and then and then that's they're up a weight. They just suck. They're not I'm, good. That's they're actually not, not a spin zone. Like that's a big thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yes, a lot it's of a their, big thing. He's right. Uh, it's like their national sport. <laughs> is it? Yes. Sumo it, is their national sport. I'm very yeah. serious. Baseball is the most popular sport in Japan, and they take but they take sumo very serious. All right, let me see. Not... It is sumo. No, it is. Google it. It's sumo. <laughs> I, I wasn't joking. You're wrong. <laughs> Our Japanese correspondent, JD Raider. An... <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a spin zone. All right. It's not a spin zone. It's unspun. Hey, special shout out. Guess who's out of jail? Facebook jail. Oh, God. Keith Gotthard. Keith Gotthard, oh. Keith Gotthard back yeah. out of Facebook jail. Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. Um, so, okay. So, maybe that's why. it's uh, we're, we're losing our best athletes to uh, to the, the sumo craft. No, our, our best. Their best. Their best. Yeah. Also, they just don't make as many people that size. It is not that size. Yeah. Simple. They need more McDonald's. JD, is that some <laughs> manufacturing? Get you some it's a manufacturing uh, issue? It could be. Okay. <laughs> So, with with that all said, um, Team USA doing. I, th I think we're for, on the women's side. We're probably on par with how we expected. I think everyone, though it's Dom's first team. I think the expectations were pretty high that she could do pretty well. Yes. So I'm not considering her a surprise semifinalist at all. And you know the good news for Dom Parrish, she's in the one weight class. Japan doesn't have. A wrestler that she would have been the favorite, right? The, sure. the Japanese wrestler, but she's she's out a last minute. I don't uh, know why they didn't replace her. I don't know either. It was really late. It was. Yeah. I'm wondering if. I mean, it was really late when they announced it. Yeah. When, but, I, I dude, I feel like the Japanese are probably like, we've been preparing one person. We're not going to send someone mm -hmm. on partial preparation. Like, I feel like that would be. If I was that partial preparation person, I'd be like, come on. Give yeah. me a shot here. That's not how they yeah, do it. Yeah, I think they'd want to get the shot. That's what I feel like. Well, yeah, sure, they would. But for, for Dom, I mean, she's in a semi against... Also, partial preparation Japan, so probably win. That's, they're, they're different different There's standards. That's my guess. Well, that, that I'm, I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm saying that's probably their rationale, if I had to guess. Or literally it was that last second that they were like, we can't do this, like... In USA, literally, it could go to court. I mean, we have Final X, but, like, they have Emperor's Cup, but I don't know who they would have taken. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like... We have Final X. They got the Emperor's Cup. This is way cooler. Yeah. But we, they also have, have... no Emperors. They also have another... They also do some other stuff, too. Like, Emperor's Cup isn't like Final X, where it's the end-all, be-all, and there's only two opponents. So, we have a clear number two. I think sometimes... 
there could be up for, you know, debate. And it could cause mm. some issues there where we don't know exactly who the number two is. There's not a clear number two. So if it was that late, they were like, yeah, we literally don't have time to do a wrestle off. Okay. I don't know, though. Don Parrish's opponent is uh, – she's from Greece. She's been wrestling on the senior level since 2009. Oh, which my gosh. Is quite a long time. Um, she has a couple bronze medals. But, you know, two bronze medals out of whatever, 10 attempts or 12 attempts or whatever, that's – that's it's okay. Dom can hang, hang with her. I think Dom's gonna. When win. was her last bronze medal? Twenty seventeen. Looks like that was a while ago. Yep. Okay, so we feel good. I think just on par for our uh, women's freestyle. Who yeah. you know we've come to have pretty high expectations there, and still four to go tomorrow. Um, so a lot to be excited about. I'm excited to watch meet Elor's debut on the senior world stage. And obviously, yeah. Helen is, you know, best I've ever seen do it for for United States. So excited to watch her. Um, but beyond that, more you can watch stuff. party with us as well. Please party with with JD. He loves to party. <laughs> Pretty please. So we had who's number one on Friday? Fantastic event. Did you watch Ben? I hope you watched. Your brother I was did. there. Cool. I, I did not watch them all live. Uh, I watched a decent chunk live in my. Uh, Started a Girl Scout thing. I went back and watched all the ones I missed. Um, I really enjoy Who's Number One. I mean, I enjoy watching wrestling, but Who's Number One is pretty good competition, and um, it's fun seeing these guys battle for that spot. I feel like the kids always, always bring it. They're always prepared. Um, there's always some exciting, unexpected results and matches. Yeah. And this was this year was no different. Um, yeah, une- unexpected results. We have a fan pick them. Contest where you know fans can pick who's going to win the matches. We didn't have an option to pick the the 160 final because we didn't know who's going to be in it. But there were 22 matches between boys and girls that they could pick, and the the majority was only right for 10 out of the 22 matches. So it's, what? It's, yeah, that's great. There was a match. There was bad. a match where 90 percent of the people were wrong. Whoa. What? Uh, wait, hold on. Let me guess. Let me. It was guess. a girls Let's match. See. Oh, it was a girls match. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But Dang. yeah, Zayn and McBride, like ninety percent of people picked her to lose. She got it done at the end. That was um, that was a crazy, great crazy match. finish to that match. But yeah, it's that kind of event, right? Where you don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, it's it's one and two, so it's very hard to predict, um, which makes it super fun. So I did predictions uh, privately. We can talk about oh, them. Oh, privately, very convenient. I, right. I mean, I didn't get them all right. <laughs> um, um, I, I, I've sent this to some people prior to, to it starting, but I didn't want to do the picks before. I wanted to Shane Sparks it um, and sit on the fence before before who's number one. But why don't we just kind of go in match order and kind of, we can talk through it a little bit. First, the 164 man. Um, Ferrari and Sealy both kind of cruise in their first match. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now listen, Ferrari looked great. But we said, it was 1 0 going to the third. We said cruise. Cruise. After cruise five control. minutes of wrestling, it was one to zero. So Speed two cruise uh, control. Skulls, I mean, that's far from cruising, but cruise. You know, Skulls is battling. Uh, I think he kind of made a bad bottom decision on the edge there. Uh, you know, Max had talked about the, the strategy was to maybe look for a reversal if it was there, and got a little too aggressive and gave up some back points, and that was yeah. Once he gave up the back points, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a really hard match to win now. Yeah, yeah. Early on though, he was so good from that splits position. It was like yeah. crazy defense. Yeah. Defense. Both those guys have really good flexibility, Angelo and, and Braden. And then, you know, it kind of set up the match where on paper a lot of people had penciled um, Angelo versus Joe and Angelo. But what, so given the fact that, I guess, were you expecting Sealy to beat up on Ruiz, given the fact that Ruiz beat him twice last year? Uh, yeah, I thought I picked I picked Angelo and Sealy to win their matches. I thought okay. I thought he had – I didn't think Ruiz had enough offense to, to hold him off for, for that long. Okay. And I wasn't really sure. I, I just thought he'd get away this time, and uh, I thought he'd grown enough to to take out Nico. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was just surprised that Ferrari looked freaking great against Sealy. I uh, I did not predict that. I was been really, I said I've been really really impressed with Sealy. I thought he was the best in the country at his weight. Um, yeah, that was that was impressive. Wow. Yeah, I think I think for. If you take it from Angelo's perspective, you've got this guy who is wide open, wild, 
it, it's a great matchup for Angelo in a lot of ways because he's so fundamental. He's so good in so many areas. Defensively, he was able to capitalize yeah. on a couple. Of, I mean, this opening, I think this was the opening yeah. takedown. That going yeah. for that Jonesy was just, that's just too, too reckless yeah. there. I, I would agree with that. Um, and there was another situation uh, that were, where, and you know, he was losing at the point, but Sealy was, uh, I would say, a little too, probably too reckless. Yes. Yeah. And it's tough too because that, like his his breakneck pace, his willingness to take risks, is how he wins so many matches. And so to ask him to switch the game plan um, is something that may take a little bit of maturity, a little bit of time, because he doesn't have to most of the time. He's, yeah. you know, he he can give up points and usually go get them back, but. I don't think he's wrestled anybody that's defensively where Angelo Ferrari is. Yeah, yeah, and I I would still be. I mean, I still am so bullish on Joe. Yes, he's young. Oh, absolutely. He's. Yeah. I mean, he, the mentality he's got. It's like you put him. He's been in a lot of different training situations. You think about this guy as a college prospect. He's gonna be go to one of these blue blood schools. You got to figure, and they're gonna clean it up some of his stuff while he maintains that wild man type of mentality very offensive always looking to score like well not only are they going to clean him up and this is what i talk about with a lot of kids that I coach it's like you're going to feel it better if you just keep trying with a lot of good you're going to mm-hmm. feel it better and better and better and your your positioning is going to get better your timing is going to get better the pressure you need to put in certain situations is going to get better so um yeah when guys take chances that's uh you know i think that's generally a positive attribute yeah yeah so i you know, losing this match, it doesn't change how I view Sealy at all. I think he's a great prospect. I think Angelo is obviously a, a ready-to-go prospect once he gets gets to college. It, it does make me think Sealy's not as good as I thought he was, though, because the fact that he wasn't able to get a takedown in seven minutes of wrestling, like, I could have seen, you know, if you, if you told me, hey, Ben, um, here's what happened is, you know, Ferrari got – uh, a couple early takedowns because his positioning was really good and he's athletic. And then Sealy came back, but it wasn't enough. I'd be like, okay, I see that. But if you're telling me Sealy went seven minutes without a takedown, I'd be like, ooh, that's that's kind of rough. Yeah, I think I think Ferrari just might be that guy. When's the last yeah. time AJ Ferrari gave up a takedown? Angelo? Or sorry, Angelo Ferrari. Ferrari. I couldn't so tell you. It's, it's been a long time. Couldn't tell right? you either one. Um, <laughs> yeah, either one. Uh, Angelo, I, I think it's. Maybe first round of Super 32 last year, and he's wrestled over a dozen ranked guys since then. Yeah, taken down the first yeah. round of Super 32, and then not first round, but early oh, on in the tournament. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, in his first loss, and then and then he just came back. He's beat a bunch of ranked guys since then, and then um, just doesn't. He might not even given up a takedown in that loss. Actually, yeah, guy, he's so hard to take down. He is, um, but he's not. He is not. While he is really defensive, he's not. I wouldn't describe him as like a defensive specialist. Like he's. Not just that. He's not a guy who just tries to win close matches, though it, it can materialize that way to an extent. So, yeah, big. He's uh, obviously a tremendous prospect. What what class is he? 2024. Okay. Is that the same as Joe? Yeah. So these are one and two in the class. They were before the event. So now they'll flip. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. Yeah, very impressive, guys. Um so then we had Webster Limley was another crazy match. Bad call uh, at the end. Yeah, let's. I'm gonna pull that. Uh, Nico, I'm yeah. gonna send you that that match. Um, um, uh, so you said Nico, but yeah, th- this is the same type of yes. thing that um, it was the key. It was Keegan and Griffith uh, in the NCAA finals, and so many guys are getting good at sealing and shifting their shoulder to the point where. The top guy kind of looks like he's on top, but he's not really on top. Like, there's not a control factor there. Um, they're, they're too far off to the side. So I really did not like this call. Um, and so, I, that, you know, maybe his actions would have changed, but if not, then that would mean Webster's the, the winner here. Yeah, uh, it certainly changed the match. Um, yeah. I thought I thought this was a great match, and I, it stinks that this kind of final exchange is sort of the – yeah. The topic because I thought Cannon looked great, but the the ride that Limley put on was something I really didn't expect. I thought I thought it was like so riding time gets a lot of hate um, from us sometimes. I thought I this actually was, like, was good in this kind. Con- it was exciting. It was exciting. Ah, you riding. admitted it. Well, in this in this case, it was. It's sometimes it is. <laughs> this case, it was. Uh, and I, I was really impressed with Sergio. It looked like a 
a Division One ride out. Like really, really, really tough. Um, yeah. But the end, which I, I sent it to, um, I sent it to Nico, our producer. It, you go to basically eight eight fifty on the match I gave you, Nico, the Webster Limley. That that shows it. It's a it's a wild kind of exchange where yeah, it's a good exchange. Webster ends up on the single. Limley split out. He um, and somehow winds up with a two off a off a little scramble here. It's a really good scramble. Both guys were better in the scrambles than I think I realized. Man, we get this video up here or what? I'm not sure. He I sent it to him late. Um, he had the other ones, but all right. Let's talk about the next match. If he gets this one up, then uh, okay, then he gets it up. Uh, so Knox I picked and Castillo. Little I thought mismatch, Webster was yeah. going to win that one. Um, Knox. Oh, you did. Okay. Uh, Knox was the obvious pick there. There's not a lot to talk about. Very, very different levels of wrestling there. First period tech. We've never had a match like that on who's number one with with that level of dominance. Yeah, I mean that's it. Just it, I mean it appeared that Knox was bigger than him. I know we said they're going to be roughly the same weight, but they sure didn't look like the same weight. Yeah. Um, yeah, so props to Castillo for going up and putting himself in you know in harm's way, and uh, I love guys who take on challenges. But maybe next time we get him against you know uh, who is it? Rainey is number two at mm-hmm. uh, one hundred six. That would be yeah. a fun one. Yeah, for sure. Yep, yep, yep. I think we'll see that match at Super Thirty Two. There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, next match was Nasir Bailey Ryder Block. This one was nuts. I thought Block would win this. I think that was conventional thought. Um, yes, I, I, sure. I 2-0 going into this against this year. I did not think it was the uh, the blowout or like the foregone conclusion that others did, though I did think Ryder would, would ultimately win. But Nasir comes out. He gets that turn with the roll-through tilt, and that was that was obviously huge. That put the – not out of reach, but ultimately out of reach for Ryder. And then he, he rode for so long. Um, let's let's circle back to the Limley Webster match here. We got it here. Um, hey, there we go. We can go to we can go to like eight fifty of the of the video file um, for this final sequence, and Ben can talk through it and officiate it. Officiate it. Um, let's do it. Let me see. Yeah, we're it's, we're a little far off right now, but we'll yeah, I see it there. Maybe we can skip. Um. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna come up relatively soon. Maybe it's um, nine fifty. Yeah, I think I messed it up. Was it nine fifty? Yeah, we can the, talk the, through the whole it, scramble ends the match. So it's before uh, this, he, before Zane Richards before is a little uh, before. A few seconds, few seconds back. Okay, here we go. You this can start it from here. here. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Leg like pass. You remember that? But right here, they need to come up. Boom! Right there. Freeze. There. Yeah. Like look, the arms in between. Yeah. yeah, and he's got a far side. It's not even on the near side, Merkel. It's a far side, so it's like you're draping over. I don't know. To me, that's not control. It never was. Um, you know, he's making a decent attempt, uh, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't either. Um, and that that's the point they, that the two was given. And then you've got Webster who wrestles through the position. Yeah, let's yeah. we can watch, we can watch it, again it again here. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a second where it kind of looks like control, but he's kind of like over the top. He's not like, yeah, I don't know. I, I really didn't like the call at all. There was a bunch of leg passes, um, and I was kind of surprised they worked. They're starting to work less frequently than they used to, but they worked. Uh, uh, Ferrari used a couple. They used one here, and there was, I can't remember the other match. There was Ferrari match is, has amazing dive rolls. He's got a like, good leg pass. He, he has like the timing or something down perfectly. This that is was pretty nice. He went the wrong way on the leg pass and everything. Yeah. I, I was kind of shocked it worked. But I love this in slow motion. This is really great. Yeah, I do too. Boom. So he throws it, like kind of shin whips and throws right there. Not this is where you can arm. make the argument. But like the leg's not cleared. And now as he comes up, boom, there's right. He's not ever covering that shoulder. Like he's covering the head and the far shoulder and that's it. Like there's no covering of the back or the hips or anything there. So, yeah. Yeah, I kind of strongly disagree with that. You got to be behind both arms for, for, in that scenario, yeah. or or if you're near side, Merkel. Which, then I hate the Merkel takedown, but yeah, I mean that that is um, unfortunately it is a takedown, but he wasn't there. So in 
this obviously had a huge impact because Webster, who needed this, uh, who needed a score here, ends up. You can play it out regular speed. He finishes on this, which would have been continuation of the original scramble. Would he have scored here? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Like, does, but does that, Limley might fight that way harder? If Limley doesn't know he's been he awarded doesn't know to, he's yeah. winning. Correct. But cer yes. Certainly, that's, giving that's, the two to Limley was the deciding factor in the match. That's that's yeah. A, that's that's the matter. argument. Could would Limley have played it differently and just tried to hang on because he would have won with the ride time point. Um, but Webster, when he brings the arm to the body, he is in a really good spot. Uh, but it's one that maybe Lemley could have hold, held on to for another 10 seconds or whatever. Yeah. And the interesting thing was uh, it, it was a no-win proposition for Zane Richards in the, the Webster corner because, you know, if you challenge right away, you're kind of – you're take, you're just wiping off a bad takedown because the, yeah. the flow of you're the action, lose. he's not going to get in there again in all likelihood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was definitely a lose, lose the takedown. Like that's where there should be just like some sort of a, cause with the challenge, it goes back to the point of the challenge. Like even if they had looked at the challenge and overturned it, Webster doesn't get that two for that, for finishing there. Yeah. So you go back. Yeah. So just wipe the takedown and take it back. Yeah. There needs to be some sort of like a grace period with the challenge where you're like, let this wrestle out. But when I, I, think, I also understand why you can't do it like that too. I also think, I mean, since that's the way it is in freestyle, this is the first folk style event back. It's, it can be a little bit hard to like adjust your mindset because you want in freestyle. It's like, well, you need to see this position play out. Mm -hmm. And then, and then if you challenge, you're challenging the whole sequence where yeah. in folk style it goes back to the initial point where the, where the thing was called. So, um, both both corners in this match challenged, and both corners were told they challenged too late, and that like they weren't gonna hear the challenge because yeah. they didn't challenge within a reasonable amount of time. Um, so I think both challenges would have been overturned as well too. Yeah. The, uh, well, did they even try to challenge the uh, Jessaroga Jax Forest takedown? No. I mean, that was that was definitely the worst takedown call of the night. Ooh, but, that one was rough. I mean, I, that was like. This I I understand. You take a picture of the Merkel. It's like okay, I get it. That's a it's the another Jax situation. Nate one. I I just don't even understand. Not yeah. good at all. We'll we'll get to it. Um, yeah. But it's another situation where, like, if they would have if they would have challenged instead of being five, five two, it would have been three zero or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was two and two. Jack's got a reversal, so yeah. Es yeah. Essentially, he got those points back anyway. Yeah. Um, Although then Jezroga did get an escape, so they made it five yes, three. So maybe one. maybe they should have. But and plus one is the normal takedown exchange rate anyway. So it it, it yeah, mattered, yeah. could have mattered. Uh, but let's talk about Nasir Ryder Block. Um, this was another example. I mean, obviously the turn was huge for Nasir, but the ride he put on and how he was able to put on a hard ride, hard tough ride, and being able to you do don't that. You like tough riding? I love it. It's great. But the thing that was great is you're mitigating Ryder's biggest asset, which is his tank, and him coming at you for seven minutes. What now, about the school of Gilman, though? <laughs> yes, yes, I don't. Bottom, baby. Listen, that was, Gilman was well into his collegiate career before he learned how to gas someone out from the bottom position. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, the, the idea that Ryder has the, those um, techniques down is uh, he'd be very advanced to have that. But yeah, he did not know how to gas Nasir from bottom. And he rode him really, really tough and didn't really give himself a lot of opportunities to score even after he was was neutral again. Uh, I was I was yeah. really impressed with Well, with I mean, and that's, you know, some people were saying cardio is going to be a factor. I know Ryder Buck likes using cardio, but even in the third period, like, he wasn't real close and, no. and Bailey didn't really look like he was fading very much. Not Maybe a tiny bit, but not a ton. He, he seemed totally in control. Start to finish, I thought it was a really impressive Very, win for this yeah. year. Um, yeah, good for him. I don't know if we'll see it again. I don't know if they'll, if they have plans for. I'm sure Ryder will be at Super 32, but I don't know about Nasir. I think he's weighing his options a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know where he ends up. I I don't know for sure that he spends his senior year in Illinois. We, uh, you know, who knows? Could. What do you think he goes the Little Rock way? I don't think so. Up? I think I think there. I think there's a, at Lamont MMA. I think there's a door open for the OTC potentially. Oh. But we'll yeah. see. That would not be a bad uh, option for for Nasir. Yeah, and 
I, if people aren't familiar, I mean, we haven't had that program around for a few years. Those guys still do get folk style competition and, oh, and training yeah. too. Yeah, they go to college opens. They, I remember they would bring a group up to the Cowboy Open every year and um, take yeah, them to some other. Yeah, the tags would go. The tags would go. Aaron Brooks came up. Uh, so, yeah, who knows? It'd be interesting to see what he does. But he's got he's got some incredible folk style skills. So, you know, I'm not sure what his best move is. But he's, Keith says he is welcome at Lamont MMA. Okay. Uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was pronounced uh, Lemon Tea MMA. Lemon Tea. Isn't that what you said? <laughs> That's what Kozak said. Lemon Tea uh, MMA. Lemon Tea. He loves lemon tea. Um, okay, so excited for Nasir's career. Excited for Coach Ayersman and Little Rock because they got a absolute hammer. And speaking of hammers, so I, I picked that one wrong, and I also picked this one wrong, Kasak Mantanona. And my rationale for this oh, one – Bowman. And, and shame Bowman. on me. Bowman. <laughs> shame on me. I, we're we're Bowman stands here. We're Ant Man. All we're the man. Mans. Mans. We're Mant Men. And sixty five percent of people, by the way, were wrong on this one. Yeah, and I. Mm. The reason I thought Kasak was he Bo's thing. He's a really good scrambler. He's good at a lot of things. But I thought Kasak would be fine in the scrambles against Bo, and he got out scrambled on the first takedown. Um, and then this turn is just ridiculous. Um, kind of nasty. It was so nasty. Uh, and it, why don't we go to what, where? Did, at what point does the takedown happen? It's pretty early. I feel like it's pretty early. The whole video file is like three minutes long. Yeah. Hold on one second. So you can go a little bit to her. Bo Bo hits a beautiful el elbow control like duck. Um. Yeah. Right from right here is fine. So he gets this. Finish, but I'm really curious for Ben's take on this turn here and how he gets it. Um, so nice dive roll here by by Kasak. But it doesn't work there. Yeah. This sta this stalemates, I think. Or does he sure? finish no, this? I think I think he gets a take on here, doesn't he? Okay. Pressures back into him. Oh, that's wrong. right. It's a first period yeah, pinfall. Pressures back into him. Pretty sure he's gonna sit in, rotate over his heel, and go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and he almost, yeah, he, Kasich did almost knock him over. But, yeah, he eventually got there. Um, so, yeah, let, let's fast forward to the turn. turn this It's coming. It's coming right now. Yeah. Um, so, he's got a half on the right side, deep waist left. But how he takes him over is crazy. So, they're on the edge. Yeah, and it, Kyle got bounce really played on this one because uh, yeah. otherwise it. Watch how he's dragging a toe. Bray pointed this out to me. Yeah. But look out. He's got the half on the right side, but he's dragging the toe. He's got it, the inside wrist. Yeah, it's pretty wild to me that he was able to hold him there. Like, I, when you show, you know, when you look at that position, this I would have said that. Is that. Yeah. He he, called, I thought he was pinned earlier than they called it, too. I did, too. Yeah. I mean, um, he's pinned there. No, for sure. I, when I look at that position, Christian, I think, like, there's no way he's holding him there. Like, that dude's out. Yeah. You know? And somehow he held him there. I, I, I don't really. He must have really good grip or, you know, and kind of pull strength because uh, – and, and Kasek's probably to a certain point maybe inflexible because, yeah, like right there, he shouldn't be holding on his back. Yeah. He's he's basically turned there. And then he, when he pulls the wrist out here on the left. Oh, he screwed them. That's, yeah. That's so <laughs> then it's over. super over. But how many yeah. times do you see guys pull that wrist out the way he did to get that half? At the end part, you mean? Or yeah, so go part? back just a little bit more. He takes the – so he has the half on the right and the wrist on the left. Yeah. And watch, he just pulls it out completely. He pulls that arm straight. Yeah. Like, you don't – I think it's way more – I mean, to me, it's way more impressive how he held the half, like, this whole time and right, right yeah. before this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually think that's it, – it worked out well for him, but I think that's probably dangerous. I think there's a decent portion of time that that wrist, you know, that it rolls out, although, and he clears it out. Maybe not. Maybe he's got a ridiculous grip and it doesn't pop out. But to me, it looks like this looks you know, like something he routinely out. does. Yeah. Um. Maybe. Yeah, it's it pretty impressive. Yeah, thrill, thrilling moment there for for Bo, who, you know, he gets it done at Michigan, as did Limley. Both guys going to University of Michigan. And what what. I mean, he's a pretty, he's a pretty fantastic prospect. Brock is also going there. Mm -hmm. The man, the man, mm -hmm. men will be Michigan men. It's, uh, Michigan I, had a good, uh, good night. They definitely did. Um, shout out to Michigan. Shout out to all the sponsors. Shout out to Cliff Keen. 
uh, for sponsoring the event. They were they were awesome to work with. Defense Soap, Dolomer. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Awesome night of wrestling for sure. It was great. And, and I mean, Michigan, the venue was cool. It was it was good to be there. But they brought the whole team. They were there from start to finish yeah. for for every single match. They were pumped up. Um, yeah, it was great. Like they had an almost an entire section filled up with Michigan wrestlers and fans and and the Lemley and, and Mantonona moments were awesome just cuz yeah. people were so fired up for those guys and and they already you could tell like feel like they were those guys are ingrained they're part of the culture. I think when Lemley came off the mat, the first guy that he talked to, the first guy giving him a high five is Dylan Ragason. Yeah. Um so it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, it d- definitely was and Bo, Bo's awesome. I mean, a guy that can turn like that, he's going to be really fun on the next level. He's just got a lot of pinning and turning intangibles. Like, he's a guy that can, you know, he hit that tilt against Joel, Joel Adams to win Super 32. He's getting, you know, pinning dudes with halves and who's number one. Like, it's going to translate, and he's going to go to Michigan. Only get better from there, for sure. Okay, next. Because I... Kasak is really, really good. I yes. was yeah. watching all the matches of him. I was like, this guy is going to be fantastic. And he lost. Um, but he'll be back. Davino McGowan, I thought McGowan got that early takedown and thought he'd be able to cruise the rest of the match. And that was not the case. Um, I thought yeah, the same sweet thing. Little is cradle sequence. Very sweet. Oh, nice. When he got that first it? takedown, I was like, this is ju- going to be just like the last time. Like, one takedown, and then he's really hard to take down. So I, I thought he's going to win it after that, but... Man, that that cradle on the at the end of the period, incredible. Very, very nice cradle, and uh, that was it. And you kind of knew at that point. You're like, all right, well, given how given McGowan's work for for offense, it's going to be a long road back for him because he's very much likes to pick his spots. Um, so I I did I thought McGowan would win this match. Another wrong. I think I got three in a row wrong here. Um, 72% of people thought McGowan was going to win this match. Yeah. I don't blame him. Dang. Uh, I just didn't think DeVino would have I, – I didn't know how DeVino was going to score. Like, I didn't see him getting a leg attack takedown or, like, getting a, even a go-behind. Um, so it was behind door number three, the the cradle to the turn, and that was it. Myers Shapiro is so good. I this thought was Ladirian, a fun match, though. It Lock was a battle. Fun. He did battle. Uh, no doubt about it. I thought she, after the early success Shapiro had getting takedowns, I thought he'd be able to pile up a couple more. But towards the end, uh, the points yeah. were a little tougher. I thought they got that duck under got call right. correct. I thought that yes. that challenge Agreed. was right. Um, albeit, albeit close, but Shapiro recovered, I thought, appropriately to, for that to not be two. Yeah. But Locke is just a sophomore, man. I mean, he's yeah, he's going to be really good. Um, obviously. Any other yeah. thoughts on on Shapiro? Lockett, no, uh, I thought I thought I guess I I feel similarly. I thought maybe once uh, Shapiro got two early takedowns, he might start running away with it, and mm-hmm. Lockett stayed in there and he battled and he wrestled hard, and uh, it was a fun match. Yeah, it was. This was not a fun match. Braden Thompson, Zach Ryder. This is not. They did not try to score many points, and they were <laughs> successful. They succeeded. Four three tiebreaker two. Um, On escape, so it was reversal escape escape uh, escape escape escape. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. And Ryder appeared to not know the college overtime rules. Yeah. Oh, really? That was what happened. I so I watched it after the fact. I guess I had the sound off. Is that what he didn't know? After the match, he was like looking around, like. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't even notice that. More wrestling uh, here. I didn't notice it. I did. Yeah, I didn't. Um, but yeah, I I mentioned it on the on the call. Like whoever has more, I li- I kind of like that rule um, because you you know what? Two minutes of sudden victory. Go, mm, yeah, go get a take. That's down. a lot like of criteria. Wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a huge criteria hater. I know. I just the only uh, where the only this match was one by criteria. I want all the uh, yeah. folk style lovers to admit it. Yeah, it was criteria. Um, the only place where it does it does suck is, um, I mean, listen, nine minutes of wrestling is a lot of minutes of wrestling to to win a wrestling match. So if you're already in the tenth minute, you don't have a lot of room to complain because that the sudden victory would be the tenth minute of wrestling. Um, 
does suck when one guy does not have stalling and they just like stall it out, they grab a leg or whatever, you know, and and that's how they win. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't that's not what happened here, right? Thompson no. put a little bit of a ride on him for a no, while. No, he, he rode him. He rode him. He rode him. him. Yeah. Um, also, did he ride him out or no? He just had the 15 second advantage. Um, yes. Yeah. So good, good win. Braden remains number one. He has quite a collection of elite wins um, for his high school career. Uh, now, this match was crazy. The next one. Jax Forrest, Nate Jessaroga. Yeah. Jax comes out, gets kind of a, like a dump takedown, and then rides Jessaroga for a while. A um, well, wasn't the majority of the first period. Yeah, he r- rode him out for sure. I think it was probably over two minutes of riding time he got. It was a lot of time. And so that that is obviously not, um, you know, the, the start Jessaroga looked for. You knew he would have his say being – Get, given his, you know, how he wrestles, his pace, whatever. But yeah. Jack's ability to ride that long was was huge. And then there was, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, the match was closer than it probably could, should have been because of that takedown that they gave Nate um, yeah. off of the off of the scramble, which was in the second period, I think, if we want to so get to in that. Middle of the second. Yeah. Um and then, and then, I mean, the other the other one here is that uh, a little before that, um, Jess Roga didn't choose bottom, which is it was the right choice, but right that choice. hurts when you can't get that point. Yeah, the the yeah, yeah this is not a take. Hold on, they right get two right here. No uh, way. I don't even know what. Yeah, no way. I that's don't just, know where to argue there because it's not a takedown. Is... There's no arguing. Yeah, that's that's and then here, so Jax would have come out. The Jax would really have been up five zero at this point. Instead, yeah. it ends up being five three out of this exchange. Correct. Um, yeah. Would have been so five, end up being five one plus ride time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Jessaroga is really good where he's good, but if it gets into some different positions, he still has some areas for growth. Yeah. And it happened; those areas happen to be where Jax is good. He's good in the scrambles. He's really good on the mat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you start, if you can get and that obviously happened in that Nicola Rivera match. Um, last year at Cheesehead, and it was, if you can get him in some of those scrambles, you can you can beat him for sure. Now it just so happens that not a lot of people can get him into those scrambles, but Jack Forrest can do that. So watching, uh, I thought Jess Rogan would win here, so I was wrong. Um, watching the dude, you've the, been wrong a lot. Yeah, yeah. JD <laughs> thought I was gonna sandbag. Um, I got some, I got some right though. Um, but with this one, I watching their freestyle. Uh, the way Jax won was like a lot of counter exposure. A lot of his mm-hmm. points were not even remotely folk style translating. Whereas yeah. like the match that Nate won was just like takedowns. Like he teched him yeah. basically. He got a lace for a couple points, but I thought it just, I was like, okay, in freestyle, Jax's style really works for counter exposure, but I wasn't um, sure he'd be able to do that in folk style. And um, he was able to generate offense and the top work was, was huge. So one of the things I think, because I think about this about myself, um, and I think sometimes people, there's obviously those, there are certain people who's, um, who have certain specific moves who work for certain specific styles, right? A free, a free, a guy who's way better freestyle because he's got a, a great gut wrench or something to that effect. But there's certain wrestlers who are intelligent, and if they're wrestling folk style, they wrestle folk style style. And if they're wrestling freestyle, they wrestle freestyle style. And I think that's Jack's Forrest, right? He knows how to get the dumps yes. and stuff when he's wrestling a freestyle. And he knows how to use the folk style scrambles and top for his advantage. So I think there's, you know, st- strategically there's ways you can play it for both styles to have styles in that style that are specific to that style that mm-hmm. also both benefit you. Yeah. And that's the, you know, the mistake in my judgment for that one. It's not that it was beyond the realm, but I just thought, you know, when they get on this mat, it would look a little different. Um, yeah. You know what's really sure. interesting about Jax Forrest, just kind of separate from from what he does on the mat, but kid who's a, a freshman, and I think when you're young, a lot of times, like, the benefit is you still have access to train with a whole lot of people, and people haven't asked you to give them their loyalty completely yet. So, like, this is a guy that had, at this event, he had Josh Kendig and Jody Stripmatter in his corner, but then when he's drilling and warming up, he's doing that with Mark McKnight. You know, normally – 
it's like you got to be a young guns guy or you got to be an M2 guy. You don't see very many kids who kind of walk the line and do both. And then he's also trains with the Bishop McCourt guys. He goes to Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. He goes down to North Carolina and trains. Like he's just – he's so open to learning from so many different people and adding to, to his – wrestling progression in as many ways as he can mm-hmm. i think it's something that is helpful and it's probably why he's able to transition one of the reasons he's able to transition so well between freestyle and folk style or between this opponent and that he's just really malleable and um it's pretty cool to see yeah so the the interesting thing here for this match and, and i thought it was the right call at the time but i'm curious for ben's thought i know bray has a perspective here but nate gets this takedown 54 seconds left which effectively tied it. I thought, I thought it was very obvious you c- cut him there and go get that takedown. Yeah, just the way it was materializing, but uh, obviously that didn't work. Do you think, in hindsight, you should he have the right move? The, the way he got that so easy, yes. the takedown, and and Jax just kind of fell over. You're like, okay, that looks like a guy that's maybe falling off. But then he over just kind of gets over pursued, and then Jax is able to yeah, scramble out all this. But they spent forty five seconds in this last yes. scramble. Yes, That's, you know, in a certain extent, like, you know, Jax did a good job, like making it, you know, working here to let the ref let it go. But yeah, they spend so much time in this position. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's right now, obviously not where Nate wanted to spend the last 45, 45 seconds. No. And I thought he was going to give up two here. And then he kind of sure looked like it. He was able to, to hold off and avoid giving up the takedown. But this ate up so much time and and. Yeah, that was, and that was great on Jax's part just to, to keep working there to make sure. Because, you know, someone who's not thinking smart there is just going to sit and, you know, try to hang on to that crotch position, and the ref still makes it in five seconds. And then they right. pop up, and they got another 35 left or whatever, you know? Yep, yep. I, I thought, you know, after he got that takedown and you saw Jax kind of collapse a little bit, I thought Jezroga should try to slap on a hard tight waist and I mean, erase that. He's got about 40 seconds of riding time. You know, try to get that off the board at least, and, oh. and you can ride out for the win. You know, so um, I didn't think about that. That's that's what I thought. I thought he, in my mind, and, no I, and I don't know. I, in my, I thought that would be a bad idea. Well, yeah, I don't know. In, in my mind, the riding time was locked. I know that maybe wasn't the case, but I thought I was like that point is coming. So, but yeah, the fact that he could have ridden out for the he for was, the win. I mean, he was at the pace he was getting takedowns. I think yes. that was the right call versus ride him out for what was it? Because he had the, he had to go behind and then he got that quick he had high two crotch, takedowns. Two takedowns. Yeah, yeah, I I and I said it was it, it was call. probably the right call, but yeah. I mean, I going back, I was like, man, he could he could have he could have ridden out for the has Jezroga ever ridden a lot? Because and that's I, this, it, and you know what? To, to the people that pick Jacks, I think this was their whole point. It's like Nate is just is sort of single threaded how he can win whereas Jax can obviously win a lot of different ways right now um and so yeah it's like you need to have the ability to put to ride out for for 40 seconds at the end but th- then again i think the the move is was still to cut him right yeah score yeah. the way you've been scoring i, I mean yeah. it makes sense makes sense i i don't know he, he looked like yeah he, i mean that's that would be an argument to why you need to be good you know some people would say like why do you need to be good at all type of positions and, and this type of thing and it's like well that's why because yeah listen if you're a beast on top test it. yeah you ride up you ride his ass out and try to win right there you know yeah. but if you're not that good on top then yeah the, it's a not a good decision and so like that's that would be a great argument as to why you need to be good in all positions because you don't know when you're going to need the, that top game mm-hmm. yeah. exactly um well, excited for for both of these guys. I mean, Jax is just a freshman. Somehow, crazy. Nate, well, Nate is going. Is this Nate's senior year now? Mm-hmm. So yeah, we. You know, you you mentioned like, oh, we'll we'll watch this rivalry a lot, but in reality, probably not. Maybe never again. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not many freshman senior matchups, and and he's got things he's gonna grow, right? Yeah, Jax is – you think Nate's probably a 25, 33 max. Who knows how big Jax is going to get? He was he looks significantly bigger there. Yeah, his dad's tall, you know, taller than him, quite a bit taller. You'd imagine – 49, 57 maybe. Oh, wow. I would think. Yeah. Okay. And then we are, we talked about the 160 finale, which was Ferrari over Sealy, and then we had the uh, main event, Josh Barr versus Rocco Welsh. Uh, also got this one wrong. Uh, I thought Barr <laughs> would win. I did, although I, I definitely 
I saw the path to victory for for Welsh, and I thought he could punish um, one of Barr's errant shots, and that ended up being the case because Barr, and this is why Barr is such an exciting prospect, is because he's so he's really offensive. He can get to legs and finish consistently, um, but you know sometimes if you if you fire a lot, like you have a defensive guy, not like Welsh, who's really good, um, it can can go the wrong way. And Welsh ends up getting that to go by, and he rode really, really well, which was something I didn't I didn't expect. Yeah, he got tough. It was interesting hearing Rocco Welsh in the post match. Just like he he said, you know, he let, he really lets like the, the like the the pain of a loss like inform him, and he's like he was open about that. Like a lot, he's like you know a lot of guys they try to say like put your mistakes behind you, put your losses behind you. And he's like, I don't know, man. He's like, I, it really does fuel me. It's something I think about a lot. And um, and for him, there was a lot of – just a lot of satisfaction in, in getting that one back. But you don't hear a lot of high school kids with that perspective. So I, I, I find that really interesting. Yeah. I'm, uh, and we could see those guys at Super 32? I think so. You know who else we could see at Super 32? Tell me. At 170. Angelo Ferrari said he wants to bump up and try to beat those guys. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Ooh. Wow. Spicy. That would be a savage move. If he goes up and he wins the four-man here and then he wins Super 32 at 170, that would be tremendous. That's pound-for-pound pound number one stuff. If he can do it. Still got it to do. Okay. Um. Oh. oh. On the on the women's side, some great wrestling as well. Two matches. Um, one, the Zayna McBride finish was was very thrilling, exciting match. There um, did not you know, she, she. No one hits that little drag reap thing this side of Colin Moore. I mean, no one no one does that. And she hit it twice. First time got stalemated, uh, but the second time she hits it to beat to beat the buzzer. Basically, um, if we can have that final. Final moments there. We got, as you see, our announcer Craig Bacorny. Right. So it's like third period or second period, late in the probably last thirty seconds of the second period. She hits it with, literally as time expires. Um. Yeah. Thoughts thoughts on this match, guys. Well, so Zayna McBride is a little bit under the radar. She and her sisters are super good, but they only wrestle like ten matches a year, and so people. Ninety percent of Wait, people why? picked. Why they they train jujitsu? They train judo. They they do a bunch oh, okay. of other stuff. And I think also um, because so you know you see you know her uniform and like her Muslim faith and facts like you know her uniform and what she can wear. And there are a lot of competitions where they've gone to competitions with the uniform that that like they're comfortable with for their religion. And then people are like, no, sorry, you can't compete. So I think they're a little gun shy to compete, but. People will also remember Zayna's brother, Muhammad McBride, who I think graduated from University of oh, Buffalo. Buffalo? At like, mm -hmm. He graduated at, what, like 19 or something? Now like, he's with Bracky. Yeah. He went to college super young. Zayna's doing the same thing. And actually, when when Spay was making the matches, he didn't know that. I don't think a lot of people did. Um, she's she's 16, but she's going to life. Like, she's going to she's done with high school. But, like this year? Like, right now? Yes, she's going to go to college as a 16-year-old. Bro, yeah. some of these guys are 16 in eighth grade. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. So oh, come on. But so I, I yeah, I, I thought it was really cool to see her get to she both the positions that she scored with in the second period, she wasn't able to oh, score God. with in the first period. Um you mentioned that that reap, but also the the duck under, she couldn't get in the first. She got the duck in the second. Uh it was a very cool match. I I mean this one this one had the the place going nuts. Yeah, it was a Oh man. It's a crazy finish. I'm laughing in my head. Like it's, it's that. I mean, okay. Congrats. That's freaking impressive to her. But what if she was like, they're like, "Hey, your boyfriend. Uh, you're in college. Your boyfriend's an eighth grader." And they're like, <laughs> "What are you doing dating an eighth grader?" And then she's like, "Well, he's actually older than me." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she has she has two other sisters too, and they're all good. They're all hit big moves. They're all pretty good. But yeah, I don't know if they have eighth grade boyfriends. Well, all right, here it comes. Wow. Back, back. Look at that boom. Ooh, nice. It's nice. That's awesome. Wow, that's cool that they're pushing them. Uh, I mean, obviously the parents must uh, be very disciplined and and getting them to college early. It's that's impressive. Mm -hmm. I can't believe she got it. That was a crazy finish. And then this Morgan Turner, oh my gosh, she she heard, scared me. I heard she's a beast. She's she, you heard right. 
she is an absolute beast. She beat a cadet world champ, Pastoriza. Um, kind of sa sad how it ended with an injury, but overall, just you came away so impressed with Morgan. So very exciting event overall. And Morgan Turner is a girl who has, you know, she she grew up around the Blade sisters. Um, she's a Harvey Twister and, and you know Chicago area, but there have been comparisons between Morgan Turner and, and Kennedy Blades already for you know for a year or more, and those are just going to continue as her first match of her high school career is a, a dominant win over a world champ. I mean, um, yeah, people aren't going to stop comparing her to the, to the to the pioneers and the great ones. Yeah, only fourteen, uh, beating a seventeen-year-old. She's on the small side for the weight, so um, yeah, very, very impressive showing by Morgan Turner. Excited to see what she can do when she hits the, the cadet age level and beyond. She looks like she's on a superstar trajectory. Uh, okay, do we want to get to uh, some questions? Any other parting thoughts on, on who's number one for anybody? I mean, just thanks to the athletes for landing on the line. I mm -hmm. mean, the Everybody came prepared and, and um, wrestled super hard. The action was great, and, and you could tell, like, these athletes care about it. They, it's a goal for them, and they act accordingly. And so I just – it's it's a, it's cool to be around these athletes and, like, see them prepare, uh, see how they handle themselves in, in victory and defeat. And every single kid in that event is going to be awesome, you know, for years to come. So it just is a special event to be around and uh, – yeah, it was awesome from my perspective. I really enjoyed it. Great. Um, okay, let's get to some questions. So, City Wrestling Guy wanted to know about just what's up with Greco, why guys didn't wrestle. We don't know about Provisor and Theoki. We could speculate, but I don't know. No, no one said. And then Giangelo just retired, so I don't know. I don't know what's up beyond that. And... You know, Greco's not going to be number one for, for wrestling any anytime soon. It's always going to be a folk style, freestyle focus for our best athletes. So that's going to make it a long road back. Yeah, I, somebody somebody in the watch party chat this morning said something about, like, Greco needs to look at how women's wrestling has developed and follow a similar path. But the difference is the, the argument for kids getting into Greco has always been just, like, more mat time for folk style development. You can learn yeah. valuable skills that will help you in folk style or freestyle, and you can get extra matches. Like, go to Fargo. You're, it's like the argument is, like, well, you're in North Dakota already. Might as well get some more matches. That's mm -hmm. that's the pitch. Yeah. It's not like – there's not it's not like women's wrestling. There's not this groundswell of sanctioned Greco in, in Colorado, sanctioned Greco in PA. Like, I mean, it's just not the same yeah. at all. So Well, the, but um, the other thing is uh, – I don't want to say it, in the argument you're making, women don't have a choice. Women just want to be good at wrestling, and right. and they're going to be good at wrestling. In Greco, um, and this is the argument I make, because our our stated goal with AWA is to have kids like college, uh, have have kids like wrestling have to go to college to wrestle, right? And obviously be skillful enough. Um, and the argument I make against Greco is if you want to go wrestle Greco in college, you literally have like one choice. One sing singular, you know, and it's in northern Michigan. If you don't want to be cold as shit all year, like eh, you probably shouldn't go there. In in college wrestling, you have many hundreds of choices, you know. So it's like, what if, does northern Michigan have the? Do they have the major you want? You know, which is like, there's just not a lot of choices. And a college coach probably isn't going to let that guy do a whole bunch of Greco because it's not conducive to his and folk style. So the high, very very high majority, like in the high ninety percent, or if they are good at both, are going to choose. Freestyle or folk style? Freestyle slash folk style because those guys go together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next question. <laughs> um, did, between Ben, Tyron, Tyron Woodley, and Michael Chandler, did any of them take amateur MMA fights while still at Missouri? Um, Not while still at Missouri. Um, Tyron, you know, it's funny. I think it was Tyron and I made our pro debut at the same time, but he had seven a amateur fights because – our when we fought professionally for the first time together, um, Missouri, Missouri, the state of Missouri had just sanctioned professional MMA like um, like a, a month before or so, something like it was really really recently. Um, and so when we did that, we did it together. Uh, Michael then graduated later. I think it was that year or yeah, because 2009. So that year he graduated. 
I can't. I know Tyron took him to a fight in the Ozarks. I do not recall if it was amateur Ooh. or not. Um, it, it might have been low level pro, but then I know his next fight after that was um, he was on like a Strike Force Challengers card in St. Louis. I think. Man, I just yeah. I just am envisioning a, an amateur MMA card in the Ozarks, and I just get excited. That just sounds like, <laughs> that sounds like a party, brother. They're laundering so much money through that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That'd be a good place to people watch. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, sure it would. We had on a swivel. Well, I'm going I'm to crazy. Vegas. I should, you know, tomorrow. I could probably look up his record and uh, see. Hold on, Michael Chandler, and I'll look. I'll see what his first fight was, and then I'll I'll know. When is that? that? Was a fight. He's is he fighting soon? Isn't he fighting? Uh, soon? Yeah. Let's see. Poirier? Yeah, no, no, it was pro. His first fight was pro. Cause look, uh. It was Kyle Swadley, Lake Ozark, Missouri, it, on August eighth, two thousand nine, and he, you know, he wrestled. Uh, he pretty much Michael pretty much went into MMA right away because literally Michael had the NCAA tournament, and uh, for his spring break, uh, and I was the coach at the time. We went, we flew to Canada because TJ Grant hired us to go train with him. Um, TJ Grant was a guy; he was going to get a, a UFC title shot. And he had some concussion issues and literally retired from MMA at that point. He had won like seven or eight in a row in the UFC at, at lightweight. And um, I don't even remember what the connection was, but he paid Michael and I to come to Canada to to train with him. And this was, this was 2009, like literally April of right, Michael finishes his college career and we go train with TJ Grant. Yeah. Okay. A little history lesson with Ben. Yeah. And he's fighting oh, Dustin yeah. Poirier on that. That next card's insane. Yeah, I agree. That was well, nice. Two more because that was that's UFC 281. You see 280s wow. in Abu Dhabi. It's it's pretty good. I mean, there's some good fights on it, but not. I think October 22nd, I think, is the one I'm thinking of. Okay, well, no, they make the matters. Uh, so yeah, UFC 281 is uh, November 12. It's they make uh, the Madison Square Garden card. They always try to make that really, really big. So let's see. Madison Square Garden's got the middleweight title fight on Sonia Pereira. They got women's strawweight title fight. They got Chandler Poirier, yeah. They got that's a they're putting Molly McCann on there. They're trying to make that one pretty big. Yeah, that's a big one. Let's see UFC 280. I don't know what that 280 one is. 280 is Oliver Makachev, Aljamain Sterling, TJ Dillashaw, Peter Yan, Sean O'Malley. That's a big one. That's a big one too. That's the Abu Dhabi one. Yeah, that's a big one too. Nice. Peter Yan, Sean O'Malley. Mm-hmm. Well, that's his mm-hmm. biggest fight ever, right? He's never had anyone that good. No, not th- even close. They jumped him like I mean, they kept him down here, and now they just freaking jumped him like way up. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I don't know. I I would pick Jan. I'm starting to get into. Yeah. I don't know. I've been staying up late. I don't. Maybe I'm. Oh, you're starting to go <laughs> off kind the of deep a party end, animal, Christian, bro. Staying up late. Next thing you're gonna be doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the next step. Going Is that to the fights step with into... sleeveless shirts. Staying up. That that uh, could happen. That that'll happen before the drugs. I think. <laughs> okay. Um, next question. Uh, if AJ Ferrari doesn't wrestle in college again, how does it affect Angelo's recruiting? I mean, it shouldn't affect it at all, hopefully. I mean, Angelo should yeah, be recruited I mean, based on Angelo and nothing else. And based on that, you should recruit Angelo Ferrari. Um, I don't I don't see yeah. red flags with, with Angelo. I, I see – I think he can be really, really good at the next level. Um yeah, least, I actually was on the I was on the phone with a, a secret Oklahoma State informant spy last night, uh, and they said Angel is a really really good kid. Yeah, he seems uh, he, he certainly seems like it, and I think uh, Bray talks to the coaches too, to other coaches, and I think no one is cool on An- Angelo at all. Everyone's like, hey, yeah, we're going, we're going after this kid. So, um, and when that's how it should be, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who's number one? OW. Got to be Ferrari, right? Says EJ Newton. Uh, yeah, I think, think so. Think so. Uh, I, I, would, I would also throw Bowman in the, in the ring. Mm-hmm. Getting a first, feel, period, yeah, first period pinfall. You can't do a lot better than that. But running a gauntlet ha- and the way he ran it, he didn't. He didn't um, yeah, I think it's Ferrari. Back. It's he, Ferrari. Bo, when Bowman came off the map, he's like, you could tell he had he had his eyes on that pin from 
well before the match because he's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's only been four pins in who's number one history. Oh yeah. So he's. Wow. I didn't know that. I don't know that. Who I, can name them? Um, well, Sasso. Sasso. Sasso highly pinned Julian Ramirez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Man, I can't. I don't know if I can think of the others. There's probably like some really early ones. I don't think there was a pin in the first one, and I don't think there was a pin in the second one either. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have a no bunch idea. of pins last year in the women's. Or not a bunch, but well, a couple. Yeah. Um, I used to. Darn it. I'm going to look at Dang, Christian. You're getting picks wrong. Staying up late watching UFC. Don't know your who's hey, number one history. I did good. We, My yeah, picks we were good. need to put you on a straight and narrow. Ben. We might uh, send you to rehab. <laughs> Voinovich over What's Vasquez. up with Hamza being so chill, missing weight? Oh, Ah, dude, front row Brian. Wait, Christian and I talked about this on Saturday. Yeah. Front row Brian thinks it was a setup, and there, dude, sometimes, I don't know if it was or not. I UFC, to my knowledge, has never, ever done anything like that. It, it would harm credibility a little bit, I think, so it would be a yeah. huge negative. But there are so many red flags. You know, the way he was told to stop cutting weight and he weighed in exactly what Holland weighed. The fact that Holland and Rodriguez was a catch weight, they barely ever do catch weights. That Ferguson was added to the card like I think it's two, two to three weeks before the fight. I mean, that was pretty weird. At 170, he hasn't fought at 170 in a long time. I mean, there was just a whole bunch of like really like weird things like, wait, why why did all this line up so well, you know? Um, and the yeah, the worst thing for me was how Chimaev acted on the scale. It was really strange. Well, I, I think here's the thing with Chimaev. He is insane. So the behavior Allegedly. of... He, he acts he acts like a total lunatic almost all the time. So <laughs> if you factor that in... I live in the cage! I die in the cage! I kill you! I kill everyone. So someone like that, they're, they're, these people don't just behave strangely and certain aspects it's, it's pretty much you're just a weird person so i thought his demeanor on the scale was one of like it was almost like face saving like you act like it's not a big deal or like you're unbothered because you don't want to yeah, give this true you don't want to give the idea that you're something's going against how you want it to go so that's how i took it like oh, i missed weight big deal um i i just don't understand what is the upside for ufc orchestrating those kind of maneuvers like why would you want to do that you had this fight you've been pumping and then you want to just throw a, a wrench in it i don't understand because you knew it would be smash time because everyone knows he's he would that dude would have killed nate diaz that would not have been good it had at been all. the end of it um i also thought holland totally mailed in the fight like he was going to get demolished but i also thought like no, but were we texting? I thought we were texting because that Granby, he did that Granby. Well, first of all, like he was just like that, like that beginner that just is like spazzing out all over the place yes. when someone's trying to grab you. Like, and like when you grab that kid, you're like, ah, I'm not gonna get too close to this guy because they're just freaking just flailing all around. Yeah, anything can happen. But on that one Granby, it did look like he landed like kind of strange. And when he rolled, he rolled strange. And Shamaya put the weight down at the same time. Like, that looked not good. You, the, Kevin Holland needs Steve Martin in his life so he can get his Grambys up. His Gramby was that not was good. It was not, not good. good. And then put the weight on him at the same time. Double not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish we could play a video of it right now. I know. But, like, the the thing that was weird is when he comes out to – because the report was these guys were fighting backstage and all this stuff. But then they come out in the cage, and he goes for the high five and immediately gets double-legged, and then all sorts of <laughs> badness ensues from there. It's like, why are you high-fiving, man? This yeah, dude's stop crazy. High-fiving. He's not high-five guy. What do we know about Hamazai? Not a high-five guy. He's 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 there to kill. He's not there to do the pleasantries, right? And now No you, pleasantries. It was a nice shot, and then that, it was over from there. So no yeah, pleasantries. I'm a, I'm a big fight guy. Not a high-five so, guy. I stayed up. I overcame a lot of obstacles. I had to get up early to fly home that day from who's number one, and I still stayed well, up. Uh, I'm really, I am the bad boy of wrestling. And Harbor media. Eastern Time Zone too. Eastern Time Zone, wake up, Ben. Everything was stacked against me, but I still, I stayed up. <laughs> what a monster! Uh, you probably took a nap on the plane or something. No, I don't sleep on planes. I Got work. it. Are you going? Out, aren't you flying tomorrow? Are you going to yes, sleep sir. on that plane or no? No. Not. Come on. No, I'm not going to sleep on that plane. It's going to be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, yeah, but are, wait, you're going to Worlds, though. It, 
I'm going to ADCC. Oh, I thought you were going to Worlds. What are you going to ADCC for? Okay, never mind. Don't fire that plane. Yeah. <laughs> what the world? Um. Okay, Lane, so yeah, Christian, you're more of a grappling guy than a wrestling guy anymore. No, uh, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Okay, other questions. Um, we have to get off soon, too. We have a hard hard out, as they say. in the Because in the we're watch partying at 945. Because these guys just want to party like it's party. 1999. All right, true or false? Do I, Bracky's at West Virginia, and they got a sweet commitment. True. Lady, who was it? Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying Astro. Oh, who was it? Who, who did they just get? Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me Leading us to believe know. it's time for more Bracky, West Virginia, and some Alien Hour with actual aliens as they a subject. They got Sean Taylor. Yes. Been all Chupacabras mm -hmm. and Mothman. It's literally named Alien Hour. I so am kind of surprised that Bracky doesn't come on and do Alien Hours at all because it you know, it'll be good publicity. Keep your keep your face out there for everyone so they know who you are. So when you call them and you're recruiting, they're like, oh, yeah. You're the freaking guy. I know you. You're on FRL talking about aliens and whatnot. I really like you. Like, I think it's good for him. He makes him relatable. Well. You know, there's not a, yeah. there's not enough people in the Division One ranks that are talking about the cryptids and the and yeah. the ghosts and the spirits. I mean, name John Smith. He's a great recruiter, but he's not going to talk about the Oklahoma octopus. It's just not going to come up <laughs> with Bracky. And that's the thing. That's the the Bracky's. I can give a, a national perspective of all the cryptids out there. So, oh, okay, you got to get a kid from Jersey. Well, let me tell you about the Jersey Devil. You know, got an Oklahoma yeah. kid, octopus right there. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's half the battle with these recruits is sometimes they, the high school kids are kind of weird to talk to. So if you have something that breaks the ice, <laughs> boom, there you go. Yeah. And then um, the no, kid gets off the phone. And they're like, I had so much fun talking to that guy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Bracky uh, – he knows he's he's always welcome. Yeah, it was a good get. Sean Taylor's thirteenth right now at one hundred sixty pounds, fourteenth at one sixty. So good stuff. He's just a junior. Let's go. Good job, Bracky and Coach Flynn and company there. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we did it. I think we did the show. I think the show is officially done. I know we did the oh, show. We, I know we did it. Oh man, we are rocking. Christian, but you're not going to be on like the rest of cold this week. To be some so bad boys. Tell the people you're out. You're done. I'm out for this week and some of next week, possibly. Uh, what? Yeah. I'll be oh. back. I'll be back. Um, JD, work on the intro, baby. No FRL tomorrow, but. Wait, we're not doing FRL? No FRL tomorrow. <laughs> the Noah told me. I'm, I'm actually not joking, but uh, on Thursday, we will. We'll talk some worlds. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys on Thursday. JD, train that intro. What's up, guys? He doesn't have to do it. I bring the silky smooth intro. He needs to do something. He needs, he needs to a, get it. You know what, You're JD? Right. You should get your own intro song. Yeah, there we go. Something Southern Fried. I think like White Snake, <laughs> maybe. White Snake would be it. White Snake. Great intro for JD. The thrill of the morning. This song is just terrible. Terrible. Turn it off. Terrible. This so is bad. so corny. It's gonna this so sounds, bad. This sounds like an Andrew Spay type of situation. It Andrew said really this bad. Video. Oh, yeah. He's been rocking out. All Turn right. See you guys.